you talking to me? Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? Well, then who the hell else are you talking to? Talking to me? No funny how. I mean, funny. I'm Peter Vink. We all go a little mad sometimes. Man that doesn't spend time with his family can never be a good man. Damn! I'm kind of a big deal. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! And the clock is running. Isn't it ticking? The clock is... T- is the clock is running. It's it's the clock is running! It's, right, okay. it, yeah, it's from Apollo, Apollo 13, I think. The clock is running! If the, if the clock is ticking, that's kind of like a time bomb. Grudge. Yeah. Grab the cat. Grab the cat. Woo! Okay. Uh, welcome back for another edition. Uh, Andy's come over again. Yeah. Uh, to the house. Uh, a a child, child-free house again. Yeah. Amazing. Beautiful. It looks like the same day. It could. It looks it like looks, the same day. Yeah. It's the same weather, you know, and uh, you're wearing the same clothing. But I, that's all I have. I don't have any other clothing. I just have this. Is that all you have? Yeah. That's, that's a shame. So, how have you been? Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are we talking about this week? Like? We're, we're going to cut to the chase because we're, we're, we're kind of good energy going at the moment. Yeah, so. yeah. And we watched a new horror film, I guess. Um, Would you say it's a horror film? I, I think... Uh, we're, we're talking about Unfriended. And yeah. I think it's a, like a new concept film. Uh, who is that? This is Laura's account. Who would hack into a dead girl's account? <laughs> Everyone, hands up. Who's doing this? Oh my god. Unfriended. Rated R. Now, I have seen something like this before. Yes, I, I'm, um, I'm aware that there are films like this before, well, but I haven't been able to find Have you ever any. heard of the VHS films? There was the. Was it Doc? Was it called VHS? Um, I think it was called VHS now. Um, dot wreck no Rec dot. it's essentially like mm. uh, an anthology <laughs> of some film of uh, horror so yes I think the first one is some guys break into a house and they're told they have to go through all these videos so every time you see the video you see what they see and it's like uh, oh. handheld stuff they're quite well made films I've heard of these what were they we, called I'm sure they're called VHS Probably, yeah. Um, no, we need to do some looking at one minute into the episode. We're looking stuff up, but um, yeah, uh, no, it's it's, it's, uh, it's totally fine. All the posties here. Horror film VHS. Cha ching. Yeah, VHS. Um, VHS. And yeah, and they've, uh, I'm sure. It, uh, I have heard of them. Maybe well, something we. So I think the to. third one is um, one of them is like this. It's all done on a laptop. Really? Yeah, so I'm not sure if that's where they got the idea for this, for Unfriended, and thought we'll expand on that and do it, make it into a, a film. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, I, I haven't seen anything like it before. I mm. mean, like I say, I, I call this concept film because, uh, and, and naturally, this isn't going to be the first film that we're going to see in this style from now on. I mean, we're going to see a lot of bad films coming from this. Yeah, you reckon And I'm kind of hoping, well, I mean, if you look at the history of, of of uh, found footage movies. I mean, the, the last broadcast um, and the Blair Witch are the two pivotal films that did it right, that that stuck to their stuck to their guns and did everything mm. um, according to you know this is what they saw and this is that from their cameras. Um, since then, you've had all kinds of directors trying to do different things and just fucking it up because they completely forget the found footage concepts and the rules that you apply to that yeah they end up doing crane shots they end up doing points of view that aren't possible they start going on the water they start yeah, 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 yeah. Um, becoming omnipotent di- um, filmmakers again but just shoddy shoddy sh- showmanship I suppose the, the good thing with this is it's sort of like it's in real time yes yeah. and it's just an evening with some kids the anniversary of a friend of theirs who died um, she killed herself. Yeah, uh, somebody who they knew at school. Who yeah. Who... So what what had happened is that this girl had been at a party 
I uh, got herself too drunk, did recorded her, put her onto YouTube and sort of shamed her. Yeah, so because she sudden, kept and, her pants. And yeah, they, she they... threw the pants. So they put, it, they put that online and clearly the shame of it made she killed herself. Nothing you do is 100% private on the internet. I, I think people get lulled into a false sense of security and think that uh, we are anonymous on there and it's really not that hard to find out who people are. Yeah. I just uh, think twice, you know, think before before you do. Yeah. A year later, she, or maybe somebody else, using her account on Facebook and Skype, starts yeah. to contact them and talk to them and stuff. It and... starts off being very ambiguous, and mm. um, um, which which is kind of good because, you know, you, you, you're not told too much about it. You know, you, you f the first thing you see is the video of of the death and then you see her looking at the video of of what what basically caused the death yeah, the that, party. you never it? see the very end of the video until the end do you? Wait, let's call it the scat scandal okay the the laura barnes scat scandal she's watching that video then all of a sudden she gets a message from laura barnes's account on facebook saying what are you watching that it so yeah. sets up the whole thing that that blair this this female protagonist who is having a night of of skyping with all her friends. Mm. Um, this is obviously something that they do quite regularly, and uh, it's kind of like hanging out, but not. It's, yeah, I think it's a lot. A lot of people do these days. Just... Cybering out. Yeah, yeah. and uh, which is probably why we don't see so many kids drinking cider outside of corner shops anymore. Yeah, they're all on Skype. They're all on Skype, the friends. waving their guns around and and um, doing even worse things, maybe. Putting their hands in blenders. <laughs> yes, why not? Um, so really, that the film's concept is very, very basic. Um, yeah. You know, uh, 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 somebody dies, and we don't know the circumstances of, of of how she was shamed and who was responsible. But naturally, all the players, kind of like Cluedo, are yeah. kind of all put on on show for us to watch their interactions. We got a boyfriend and girlfriend who who start the film off, um, kind of cybering each other in a way, kind of mm. like just teasing. I mean, we've all done that. We all remember the origins of of, of Skype and what potential it had for <laughs> for uh, revealing things. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things that you do. You know, you got to figure it out eventually. Those, you know, you can't beat a bit of real flesh. Um, but I mean, this did, did this kind of take you back in a way to when you were younger and kind of discovering Skype for the I've never really rooms. done Skype and the webcam thing. Yeah. It's never really been something I've done. Because I've I've completely lost interest in that whole aspect of of the internet, really, and doing this kind of a thing, chat rooms and yeah, I sort of use the internet as just a news tool as well. If yeah, I want news... to find out what's going on, and I go online. I think and... I'm on YouTube more than anything. Yeah, just looking at stuff and filling my brain with. But either way, have you seen the um, review of Pixels? Half in the bag. Jay and Mike are frauds. I have, yes. <laughs> Brilliant. I'm, yeah. back, I'm back to liking them again after that. It really made me happy. I think what you, I think what happened was is that you felt like they were kind of going out of their way to be obnoxious. Yeah. Uh, but that was a part of their character. Oh, no, I get that. Yeah, I got that. I, I sort of just thought it was this holier than thou sort of attitude. It's starting yeah. to getting a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but it seemed a bit... It seemed, I've, I've missed their, it, it was, their it, it shooting was, shooting the crap out of each other with guns and, uh, and plinket, you know. Yeah. Um, which oh, well, they they've put out the Plinket review as well for Star Trek 2009 as well, which is quite quite good. Oh, is it? Not and they, they do a whole, whole deconstruction of where Star Trek was and where it where it went and how it is now, and and uh, not just about the film but about the whole franchise. It's right. great. It's quite interesting and how it compares to Star Wars, which All is right. even, yeah. So I've definitely paid. If we're talking about Red Letter Media, we're talking about the uh, the guys Mike and Jay talking about um, Star Trek. Um, but is it as Plink? Is it as Plinket? Um, no, that the, the, the oh, right. oh yeah no the, the Plinket review is Plinket yeah it is the two thousand nine Star Trek is yeah Plinket it is oh, Plinket right. review and it's um is yeah it's like about what two hours long and I don't know actually it's not not that long actually I think it's about an hour hmm. it's in two parts two half hour segments might listen to that somewhere. um yeah it's worth watching I love it I lo I, I love what they do and, and and but I think recently they have kind of their half in the bags haven't have kind of been half in the half arsed in the half arsed in the bag and I think that they half need to in the bag. Because I, I just miss them Fuck them movies. doing the whole melee thing and, and, and screwing over Plinket. Which they've gone back to now. Yeah. So um but back back to Unfriended. I enjoyed watching it as a concept. You wanna take some
some pictures? <laughs> Post it. I need another drink. Dude, look, look. <laughs> I, I thought it was a completely immersive experience. It is, that's it. And you don't want to move away from it. As a horror film, it's not scary in the slightest. No, I don't call well, it. As, I think it was meant to be a horror film, but it's not, really. But for, for young generation, yes, I think this would probably touch home, because this is more their thing. This is mm. what they do. For us, it was kind of like outsiders perverting... On a, on a teenage yeah I suppose lab, so um, yeah like I yeah. said I found it really immersive um, <laughs> I liked all the parts where they you know as they're all talking on Skype they're having little conversations with each other you know on Facebook on, on iMessage and things like yeah. that and and they're just bouncing around on the chairs in the background just doing their thing and, yeah. uh, and it's it is you, you you are literally I mean you are literally just watching a slice of life yeah for two hours well, it's about an hour and 20 minutes. Hour and 20 minutes, is it? Yeah, um, it's a it's, very short film. Yeah, I think it felt long because I had to keep on stopping and starting it. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I don't like, like that part uh, where she's the, the same, we, you know, this has happened before and sends a link and it's like that, do not answer messages from the dead. No, man, there's no, there's no, there's no way. What? There's no, I'm not doing that. The fact that this is all going on, they're all having a conversation and she's Googling things that are happening yeah. at the same time and... It puts you in it. It does. It really does. Yeah, you are literally Blair. It's like yeah, a, a you're one of them. It's like a computer game in a way, where you're yeah, you are yeah, yeah. actually the principal character, except you're you're this young, gorgeous, raven-haired beauty. You do get immersed, and mm. I I couldn't pull myself away. Yeah, I could not pull myself away. I felt like I was intruding, which is great. I felt. The, the, yeah, you felt a bit I dirty, had feelings. didn't you? I had feelings about perverting on their relationship on camera, as if I was because that that blank icon, that blank Skype icon, mm. that's us. Yeah, essentially, yeah. It also builds attention because you know, as an audience member, I was watching it on my laptop, and I desperately wanted to be able to change the view, and you can't. Yeah. It, oh, it that's interesting. Like so you saw it on a computer. I did. Did you try to click and stuff like that? I did. I found myself touching my computer. That's very yeah. interesting. See, when we were filming it, that was something that uh, both the writer and the director talked about is they were hoping that, like, you know, when you're watching the cursor move around the screen, that it, you feel like you're part of it and you almost want to, like, get in there and, and, and type and do things. So that's really great that you actually felt that way because that was definitely the intention. It is us. And we're kind of willing, because we know it's a horror film, we are willing the, the, the horror to kind of progress. And that's exactly what the ghost of Laura... Barnes is is wanting as well, mm. which is I, I, I fascinating. Love, yeah, I love the whole Ghost in the Machine concept. Yes, you know, it, it's it's now our lives are so on the internet. So yeah. we're also, ghosts have to go there too. So now. now that's where they go. It's like a natural progression, isn't it? Yeah. It's like we'll we'll not just haunt houses; we'll haunt the internet. Well, the ghosts are obviously just standing around them going, ooh, I'm going to get you, and it's not working. Because, yeah, yeah right, yeah, okay, exactly. that's it, I'm I going in. I'm, what's all these bumps that's been going on in the house? Why, why do things keep moving? I don't care, I'm on the internet. Yeah, I'm on the that internet. That doesn't matter, I'm, all right, I'm well, we're going to have to go in there now. Spotify, a little bit of Hendrix, Yeah, drains it out. Yeah, exactly. So, And the fact that it sort of hacked all their accounts... Mm. so they all switched the volume off on all their computers, uh, the microphone on all their computers, and all yeah. of a sudden it whatever it is switches all back on and it's completely in control of everything and I love that I mean okay there, there is that conceit about I mean we, we talked about poltergeist about, about what a poltergeist does and what it can do yeah and but again with this it's left completely ambiguous you don't know what it is you don't know what it is you don't know if it's a ghost you don't know you if don't it's know a ghost of her it could yeah or it could know. just be some psycho so yeah. it is ambiguous and it that's is. nice because yeah. when it had the, that, that, that big lad's death he do it's just a webcam watching him mm. well that you assume so when he opens yeah. he moves all that rubbish out of the way and he looks all of a sudden whatever he's looking at yeah. has done something to him and I'm sorry and then he goes plays, plays with the blender I don't believe that the ghost of Lauren Barnes went to Best Buy brought a webcam no and then set it up you know this isn't like this is my first year anniversary and I'm going to get to the bottom of who did this and I'm going to do all this elaborate stuff so in a way I kind of lean away from the, the supernatural paran paranormal and look more into the idea like of it being a revenge her parents oh uh, yeah her per you can imagine that happened to your daughter and then you go onto YouTube and you see that video of your own daughter who got yes. too drunk at a party shit herself and everyone thought it was really yeah. funny and you could ha literally just go mad wanting to 
yeah. seek revenge. And, and yeah, so why this not? could be a revenge thriller. It could be a revenge thriller rather than a horror. Mm. Yes, yeah, so and, and it's it's psychological because it does affect you mentally because you are you you are feeling things all the way through it. There's not one moment where you're disengaged. No, absolutely not. Because the internet does that. And that's the power of, of the computers and the mm. internet. You are, and, and that's, that's probably why some people, who, but the ones who hated it, basically wanted to go and watch a film experience. This is not a film experience. This is a it's a slice of it's a concept. Yeah, it's like just watching someone's evening. Yeah, it's more artistic than that, and yeah. I think that's probably where people are, are missing out. I mean, I've actually been to the Laura Barnes account as well on Facebook, and well, people are angry. They're out on there saying this, this this account should be closed. It's a shameful thing for movie producers to be make, uh, scaring children and making them believe that they're going to be stalked by a by a killer ghost. It's really inappropriate. And I just oh, I, no, I, no, I, no, I no, said, no, no. guys, relax and just let's just just play along with it. It's a game. There's a lot more worse things that 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 teenagers are believing about themselves, about life, about the world that are on the internet. This is purely a film. They know it. They wouldn't be on this account if yeah. they hadn't seen Unfriended. And that's great because all of a sudden you've watched the film, then you can sort of be part of that film yeah. by commenting on Facebook and going to Laura well, Barnes' account. They literally are. They basically that's the amazing. parent. The parent of Laura Barnes is. Um, I mean, this is outside of the film. The producers are still posting f- uh, as a parent. To this day, uh, on the wow. Laura Barnes Rest in Peace page on Facebook, wow. putting out their little tidbits about how much they miss their little girl, and they're still doing it now. And it's it, this is rhizomatic marketing, like they did with Blair Witch before yeah. the movie came out, where they put out this idea of these children going missing, and then they they, they said, "Well, we found this film footage. We're going to piece it together, and then we're going to put it out." It was all done systematically, bit by bit, on the internet before the film ever came out. That's very clever now they're doing yeah. this is kind of like keeping the promotion together this is a really really clever concept yeah. and it is freaking people out because they can't handle it um, as, as be, you know, especially parents who are kind of like thinking this is wrong they shouldn't be doing this um, you know well, they, they said movie producers shouldn't be threatening children they're not threatening children. nobody's threatening anybody the film is a movie and you, you either separate reality or fantasy this is the biggest challenge that children can have with that ability to separate reality and fantasy yeah well it's, yeah I think the biggest problem children have is growing up not, not knowing the difference not being conscious of what they look like and thinking I have to be thin and all that kind of stuff exactly that's what parents should be scared of not that okay. actually when I was watching it Taff said oh we've got all this to come with River <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> you know, this all being online and talking to the friends all the time, constantly and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 like, that kind of thing, that element of it. Yeah, yeah, not the getting drunk shit yourself at a party. <laughs> <laughs> but we've all done that. But that's the thing, that this film has layers, so many layers. I mean, mm. we've, we've already, we've talked about the marketing layer of it, which is still going on. We've got the layer of it being about teenagers... Uh, and how teenagers interact these days, which is different to how we did. Mm. You've got the uh, the thing about cyberbullying. You've got the paranormal layer, layer, but then yeah. you've also got the psychological revenge layer and the techno- uh, yeah the technology layer. Yeah, There's absolutely. So many things going on, even though the, the premise is so basic. It's just it makes you, it puts you wherever you want to be, mm. where your brain is actually working. It, it's got a piece for everybody, and that's that's fascinating. But you're right about that. I'm, you know, I'm thinking I have no idea what Aspen's going to be doing when he's a teenager and how immersive the world is going to be. Yeah, is Facebook good or bad? Oh, this is a good question. Because I think we really need the internet to be that thing that we all dreamed of it being. We need it to connect us all together. We need it to introduce us to new ideas and new people and different perspectives. And it's not going to do that if it leaves us all isolated in a web of one. Um, for cyberbullying, it's definitely bad. I mean, I can understand the. I mean, if we look at that layer for a minute, cyberbullying itself. Um, they say that nowadays you can't just be bullied at school. You, you, you can basically the bully can find you at home mm. through the internet. Especially online bullying, cyberbullying. Yeah. I mean, you don't even know who these people are. There's not a real face. They. They have a picture as their avatar, but you don't even know if it's really them. So I wouldn't put too much stock into what these people are doing or saying, but also protect yourself. Don't 
I mean, my message would be don't put everything out there on the internet um, that could potentially yeah. harm you in the future. Even if you delete it, it's somewhere in the clouds. Yeah. I don't respond either. Don't respond because that just feeds them. It just feeds them, yeah. Well, you can always block them, I guess. But that doesn't mean that they're not obsessed with finding ways of getting to you through your friends and through other ways and yeah because you know. I, I had someone from who I have no interest in ever talking to add me on Facebook <laughs> didn't accept them not interested and then someone added me who was born on the 25th of December and was just friends with some of the people at work yeah clearly a fake account freaked me out Three days later, I'm paranoid as it is. Three days later, someone else added me who. It, again, it was just like this weird. It was a picture of like but, this very beautiful girl, and then when you click on the other pictures, it was just like this younger, shy, like oriental looking girl. Mm. Thinking weird. You didn't fake accept. account. Didn't yeah. accept. No, not no, a chance. No, no. So <laughs> I was like, right. It just freaked me out, and I come off Facebook. Not just because of that, because, as you know, I have this love-hate thing with it. Well, I'll not be on Facebook for six months, then I'll go on, and then I'll come back off. Yeah, that's fine. I don't like the fact that people can find me. Mm. I'm, I'm, I've got a presence that people can always... Twitter, I can kind of get on with. I don't. Twi- I like Twitter. Yeah, Twitter, Twitter isn't kind of like... Um, Twitter's just rambling, ramblings, little ramblings, and that's fine. But, but Facebook is literally a... a it's a wall of your life yeah and it's you and people kind of use it to kind of project themselves i mean i i can't stand that that idea of it and sometimes i get caught writing a, a post and i look at it and think i don't want to tell them this delete yeah that's it you know, like yeah. i'll be driving and i'll think of something really witty and i'll pull over so i'll put that as a status because everyone will think I'm really clever because I've thought of something clever and funny. I'm thinking, what, the, what the am I doing? Is, yeah, what is going on here? What yeah. are we doing? <laughs> what, exactly? I don't have my family on my Facebook. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, and for one reason is that I, I don't recognise them as the people that they really are. They're, they're, they're kind of pretending to be something that they're not, that they think that they're this popular entity when actually everybody thinks that they're this popular entity on Facebook, that everybody's looking at them, that you are the centre of the Facebook universe Mm. and you have all these people looking at you. But it just turns out that everybody's the same, but they don't get that. And it's kind of an odd kind of quasi, I don't care what you're doing as long as everybody loves what I'm doing. Yeah. And it's that kind of attitude that that, that rips me apart. And I, I ended up not adding my family to this new account because I don't like to know them in that way I like them to ring me up and say so what's new in your life and I tell them what I want them to know Yeah. rather than them saying well I've got nothing new to say because I can clearly see you're having fun or not having fun Mm. because you're on Facebook and I just don't like seeing them everywhere and it's like people every aspect of their day they, t- they put a status about it. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I was angering me. Oh, I like, couldn't wake up this morning, but thankfully I've had my yogurt and I've had some fruit. Picture. A picture of my yogurt and yeah, my fruit. Yeah, and then now <laughs> off to the gym. And then status where they are. Yeah. You know, was it check-in? I, I, I love gym. that yeah, that, that whole thing where they then, show people where they are. They're not at home. Let's go burgle them, shall we? Right, there was a rapper... Uh, called Ironic, right? But it was spelt I, with a K at the end instead of a C. Uh huh. And um, it made me laugh this because he he put a Facebook comment saying going to such a shop to buy these trainers. Ha! Ah, can't wait to get them. Checking when he was at the shop, bought these ridiculously expensive trainers, and everyone's like, "Oh my god, great trainers, mate!" He said, "On my way home, can't wait to put my new trainers on." He got robbed outside of his house. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a sad thing because people don't realise this. I mean, my my friend was trying to sell her house through Facebook, putting pictures of it up and putting the address up, and then having dinner with my family at the local pub, or I'm in I'm off to Lincoln. Yeah. So straight away she's got a picture of everything in her house, and the the address is in a post, and I, I was like, yo, I don't, I don't, I'm not even going to warn you. you. You're stupid enough to not even think about it yourself. 
Um, I never. We, we, Catherine and I have a rule. We never actually tell people when we're going somewhere. We always mm. tell them when we've come back. Yeah. If we even need to tell them. I mean, I, we don't even post pictures of where we go anymore. I just don't want to share that with people. It's what we do. Exactly. You know? And that that taking all that into <laughs> consideration. Consideration. <laughs> why have Facebook? It's an odd thing. It's an odd thing. I mean, we've been trying very much to kind of get uh, this podcast. I think it's some, right. Okay, on there. <laughs> and that's not working. As a marketing tool, it, it, should, it should be, be great to a way to find people. But then it also seems that friends and family who will support any kind of picture I put up of my daughter. Oh, she's so beautiful. Well done. Look how much she's grown up. Yeah. But then I say, oh, we've done this podcast about what whatever it is this week. Please listen. It's, couldn't care less. Couldn't care less. It's and not it's about them. No, 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 it's no. It's about no. something. Yeah. It's easy to say your, your son looks amazing. Look how happy he looks in that picture. And it's, and yeah. then it's it's not about you. It's about them feeling good about saying something nice about you. Yeah. But then when you put something on that you are actually trying to do something creative and make a little bit of a difference. Couldn't yes. care less because it's not about them. They have yeah. to invest time to listen to that, and they're like, "No, I've got my own life." Exactly, and I think that that's exactly it. By saying how good, how beautiful your child is, and how it makes them feel good because they've said something nice about you or your child, and it affects them. It's, yeah. it's kind of like a connected entity. But for them to invest the precious time away from Facebook and to listen to a podcast we do but they is don't even altruistic. Have to they don't even have to listen. They can just like every post uh, something or something. Or share least. it. Share it. And so just then say, maybe, you know, yeah. the laws of average would say someone will go, well, I like X-Men. Yeah. I'll, I'll listen to that and see what they say about it. Or whatever it might be. But they don't want to do they that. They don't want to do it. And I find that bizarre because they always want you to do that for them. Yeah, and I've I've I used to, when I first started back in two thousand and nine, everybody had a podcast. Everybody I knew in America had a podcast. They've stopped doing it now. They've kind of split off and done their own things, which is much better because all we were doing was like forwarding and say sharing people's posts and things. I did one um, one podcast where I actually did a poster. It was our Podfling podcast. Yeah. We were really excited because beforehand we did a trailer. And everybody liked the trailer. We were excited because everybody was kind of excited about it. And they said, oh, great, this looks good. So we made the first episode. We put a poster up and we tagged every single one of our friends in the, in the poster. Oh, my God. Were they happy about that? No. <laughs> I got m endless messages from people saying, why am I tagged on this? Why have you added me here? What, what's this? I said, well, you like the trailer. I thought you'd appreciate, you know, being a part of our big launch. And it was like absolute. They didn't want it on their wall. They didn't want anything. I said no. Uh, and one person said, "Hi, this is um, a comedian in, in Los Angeles who I'm not going to mention. I'm no longer friends with her anymore. She's a very selfish bitch." Right. Um, she said, "said Hi, I, I very appreciate your support in my account, but please don't add me in your things because I get so many people oh. requesting it." And I don't want to kind of feel like I have to like everybody's stuff because then I get inundated. But thank you very much for supporting my stuff. And I kind of like, well, delete. For what it's worth, it's not really, uh, other than that, for mending fences, maybe. When someone says to you, oh, right, what's your, are you on Facebook? You say, no. It's like you're, you're ostracized for not being oh. on Facebook. Almost. Yeah, well, it, it's such I was an bullied to go on. <laughs> yeah, it's such an alien concept for people to not yeah. be on it. Yeah. And I think that it's it's good. I think maybe it might be a good idea for us to kind of shut down on our Facebook side of things for, because literally, you know, nobody's, nobody's really paying attention to, to frame by frame on it. I think we need to just focus purely, and this is kind of like my revelation to you, I'd rather just not post on there at all mm. and just keep it to Twitter and just keep it where it where it actually works Twitter you, Twitter you seem to find the people amazing support yeah the, the yeah. because the the amazing things of hashtags work well on Twitter really well and you can yeah. find your people yeah so like I, I honestly think Love and Mercy podcast did well because by our own standards did well yeah because you know, I could tag it to Brian Wilson and, you know, Al Jardine and stuff, and then people see it and yeah. think, well, I'll listen to it. It was then. the Firefly, that episode that did that, and the fans really took heart, took it and rode with it for yeah. us for a while. And that was a phenomenal couple of weeks, at least, of of, uh, 
of interest mm. and uh, I think I really enjoyed it. I think we need to kind of focus on, the, on those people because they are the, they are the pulse that's keeping us going really well uh, yeah I think when Con Man comes out we will yeah we will ride, do, ride that we'll boat again do, yeah definitely do a whole Con Man thing so so well bringing it back to Unfriended then you know yes. it has many levels it's a very immersive experience I don't think any part of it was scary there was no shock no 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 in it. Um, do you the only my own criticism I have on it do you use the um, pixelation thing too much so when all hell's breaking loose only when hell's breaking loose does it, it, it all distorted. gets all pixelated and, and I, I was think, like that's probably we didn't have the money to have amazing what a, you know visuals yeah so it was a bit of a but, the, but distorting the I mean distorting Mitch's face kind of made him look freaky a little bit and that was the reason behind it it's, it, it adds a kind of freakiness to the shot you don't know what's happening for a second mm. and I think that's probably what they were trying to do um, I it, thought it just got a bit tiresome yeah when it was all the maybe. time but you're, you're that, I suppose that's my only criticism of it the acting is good though I mean if you actually think about these these people here are actually actors they're not you know you're not watching people on a Skype call they're actually acting yeah. I think I think I mean how do you how do you go about putting this together I mean, if, if you're making a normal film about a group of kids, you've got five kids who are being stalked by, uh, say, a psycho mom whose daughter died in, of, of a scat scandal. Yeah. And if you're doing that in a normal kind of like Final Destination type of film, you'd just shoot it like a normal film and it would just be flat and boring and, and what you've seen before a hundred times, mm. a million times. That's exaggerating. Um, <laughs> but with this, you've got something so different that it's not a film and ha but how do you go about making that um I, I think what was so interesting about it is that we were isolated in our own rooms but at the same time we were all in the same house uh with the exception of jacob who was annexed out to like the garage workshop area it was like a converted wood shop shed to mm. like let's just call it what it was okay oh yeah but but we were all wired in uh, with the Skype program that we had that we were filming with. So even though we were separate, we were all on a Skype call whether or not we were filming. So, you know, they call cut. We can all talk to each other over Skype and be like, oh, I like this bit or blah, blah, blah. Or yeah. not even talk about the movie and just be like, what's for lunch, you know? Yeah. So it was like we were in the same room even though we weren't. I mean, mm. you think, okay, what do I need to do? Do I divide all the different elements? Do I divide all the chats? That's kind of one script. Do I divide all the visual images? Is that another script? It, I mean, yeah. is it like layer upon? I'd be very fascinated when the DVD actually, when I actually look at the yeah, extras on the DVD, because to me it seems like an impossible task to put all this together uh, as a it, with it, with the mindset of a filmmaker, because you don't you, you're not making it in the same way. So whoever did this as a first time concept film, I know it's been done before, but this is kind of really the first time it's actually been done well. Yeah, well, How, like, like I said, it, yeah. was, it, it was done well in VHS. I can't yeah. remember which it was like two or three. And um, I sh we should talk about them, I think. Maybe, it's like yeah. an anthology. It's, it's usually about four stories. Yeah. And like the last one at the end was like apocalyptic. Yeah, yeah. I, it, 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 a, bit, a bit too far no no it was great it, it was just good. one of the stories was the end of time it okay. was like you know the horsemen of the apocalypse came up and stuff like that the really well done deal the, the sort of say right in fact we definitely have to do this because they, they get four good directors and they say right you make a short horror film you make a short horror film you make a short horror film and we'll all put it together as an anthology and with okay. this overriding art they're really good they're, really, they're good films I yeah. really enjoy them and um, yeah. so yeah one of them was just like this but it was just between a guy and the girl you know Fair what enough. I mean yeah. yeah so it's a little bit more basic but with the thread of all the films together it kind yeah of... it just had this good moment where you, she's yeah. walking around the house she's either in the house on her own or babysitting I can't quite I think she's in the house on her own she just talks to this fella and this fella goes oh I thought you said you're on your own he said what do you mean he goes well who's that behind you it was that kind of thing and then she's like stops looks around there's no one there but she you can see someone on the on the actual pc that's kind of interesting it's, re it's really well done yeah, yeah. so they've either they've seen that and thought let's do that but really go to them yeah. so it's nowhere near as immersive as this yeah it's I mean, just a nice is... idea you know technically I, I i don't understand how as as somebody who's who knows film editing pretty well mm. uh, who knows the, the filmmaking process pretty well this I'd be like 
very confused about. Yeah, how to yeah how, put how, it all how to do it. And I think that it's uh, in itself is is clever. And they're probably they're probably going to come onto the DVD and say and explain it really simply. And it's going to be like, oh, oh, I get it. Oh, so it's that that easy. Mm. But then if they do the how to on the DVD, then you are going to expect a lot of really bad um, rip offs of this movie. Yeah. Um, because you can't you can't beat this is actually really really good I mean these these kids are, are very well chosen mm. they're very I mean real, the real realistic characters realistic people I mean are th- were they all shot separately were they all filmed did they actually have different rooms surrounding them with different cameras and they're all actually doing the whole thing together but they're all in their own little rooms mm. um, it, it's it's baffling to me. I mean, I can I can imagine that it's kind of like a small set, small set, small set, small set, small set, yeah. and they're all just kind of just chatting with each other, and they've all got the computers in front of them. They've just got all the cameras there doing them live at the same time, but it's not like that. Mm. No way, and it, it's, that is incredible. This yeah. was this was an interesting part of the that, that halfway through when it they're was trying quite nail biting that yeah. Trojan, the guy, and she can't do it because she's got too many. She's have a download of stuff that is stopping her from emptying a trash and you were kind of like do it quick quicker quicker you know it was quite nail and, and, but this is quite a typical thing of Apple that happens I mean, yeah, sometimes, it happens all the time sometimes you can't delete a file in your movie uh, iMovies or whatever because it's it's been open somewhere else yeah so, and you're trying know, to find where it was where it just was. shut that down and then you can delete it and so. that that is that was really nail biting and I think that that worked really well and the fact that he actually came up with the idea and actually tried to talk to everybody to, to, to do this I was totally immersed. I was like really excited, yeah. um, and you know what? And you forget about the idea of it being a ghost. You do. You kind of just slip into the into the whole idea that somebody's really going at them here, and it's you know, it's not your typical slasher teenage movie. It's not. I'm impressed. Yeah, I was impressed by it, and I'm surprised. I'm actually glad that you were because I kind of thought that you would be on the same level as me on this, and, I'm, and I think this is probably the first time we've both been on the same level with uh, a horror movie in a way apart from Starry Eyes Star- yeah of course and, things yeah. Like that. And, and it follows oh okay maybe we have been but uh, but yeah this this is the kind of thing that, that really excites because you, you don't know what's going on behind them in the shots as well you, you're kind of waiting for something to... is that a summer I saw in the uh, yeah I think the, so there so yeah, unfriended. Yeah, unfriended. It's it's definitely worth watching, and I and be very aware that there are going to be lots and lots of rip-offs, rip-offs coming yeah. out. Called unblocked. Unblo- no, okay, let's let's lay them all. Come on, let's make our own list. Yeah, quick. We've got five minutes, okay. right? Um, unblocked. Un- unblocked. Um, uh, blocked. Blocked, of course. Um, kill book. Face uh, death. Uh, <laughs> tweet tweet. Tweet, tweet. <laughs> Shit, I can't think of it. Face, face, In- faces of, faces of book death. Insta death. I'm not very good at this. Insta death, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, ghost gram. Spotify me. Yeah. E, 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 I death. I death. I ghost. Um, you could actually put an eye in front of anything. Death, I death space. Death space. Um, yeah, my face. <laughs> drop dead box drop dead box that's good I yeah, like drop that. dead box yeah yeah let's name if we name them all now then, then they'll, they'll be like oh we've already done that. They, they've already thought of that yeah one. ghost tunes ghost tunes ooh yeah, yeah. or slaughter tunes slaughter tunes death, yeah um, um, death book death book's been done yeah um, what, what the... come on there's so many there's what was the um, there? Tululu, the Hulu. twatter <laughs> Um, oh, we've got Periscope now, haven't we? Yeah. Deathflix. Death, per- Deathscope. Deathscope. Or Peridef. Perikill. 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 Yeah. Hang, like w- a- hang with your murderer. Yeah. That's awful. <laughs> um, hang with, yeah. Death and meme. Yeah. Y- yeah. Y- Yama d- death. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there is that, that rest in peace, Laura Barnes. There, you can see that. that that's actually so. If you, if you were, for example, if you were on Facebook, you'd be able to go there, and there'll be little little tidbits from Laura Barnes's parents. As it stands right now, I don't think I will ever go on Facebook. How you again. feel about? It? I yeah. don't think I ever want to. I don't think. Yeah. My psychologically, it's something because I'm, I'm such a paranoid guy, and I'm scared of stuff all the time. Mm-hmm. It's not a healthy place for me to be. Yeah, I mean, I've got to keep it open for for one of a business channel, but for Facebook, 
um, yeah, for for frame by frame, I think we're just gonna. If anybody is watching it on frame by frame on, on Facebook, um, then you already know that you can get it on iTunes. You already know that you can yeah. find us on Twitter. You already know that we're going to be Instagramming stuff, and yeah. uh, you know, just get over there and uh, you know. If you want to see some gl- glorious posters and make mouse mats for, um, for your friends, then uh, you can drop us an email. Exactly. That's so for cool. this week, I think we shall um, say, um, what was it? Take me to the beaver. <laughs> You've forgotten your Take catchphrase. me to your beaver. <laughs> Take me to your beaver. <laughs> um, what was it? To the beaver. Is, oh yeah, to the beaver. Is that what it was? I don't know. We're I gonna... can't remember. No matter. Yeah, it's great. It's a great it's phrase. Something to do with beavers. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah unfriended interesting check it out thank you very much for listening yeah cheers guys next week bye Beaver. <laughs> I'm a successful social media consultant even though I've never had a thought or original idea in my life but because my firm charges lots of money we've put social media on the tongues of some of the biggest companies in the world without providing an actual service. To survive in the new internet economy, you need to come up with a new service or product that people will want. Not likely, right? (laughs) But social media eliminates the need to provide value to anyone. Let me give you an example. My firm was contracted by Cheetos, so we went around the room, talked about ways to leverage their brand online, and it turned out none of us had any original ideas. So instead, we gave them a Facebook page. Eventually, people liked it. These people liked Cheetos, even though they had no reason to, as we gave them no incentive. And remember, any teenager could have done what we did for no money and much faster. Using your brains to think of an idea and your skills to implement it, that's the old model. Like anything that's old and requires effort, It's inefficient. Facebook is already invented. We simply need to know it exists and we can pay ourselves richly as middlemen to leech off of their work. Our firm was hired to expand Speed Stick Deodorant's Twitter footprint. They already had a Twitter feed. and We, of course, had no original ideas. So we hired a separate company to create thousands of fake Twitter accounts designed only to follow Speed Stick. We were able to increase the number of accounts following Speedstick from 300 to 900,000 in less than a week. And the best part is, all of these accounts were robots. So we didn't have to tweet anything because nobody was reading it. Companies don't care if their followers are real or not. So they'll pay you either way. 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 They'll pay you either way.